the monk. Young Dave began his life in the country. He moved into his home and settled in, and when things quietened down as they tend to do, Dave heard a noise, an odd noise, not a loud noise, but a very constant noise. Day and night and night and day, this noise would trickle in his ear, rattle around his brain, and slide down his spine. Dave did everything he could. He checked the plumbing. He checked the wiring. He listened for the wind. He listened for the water. He checked the babbling brook. He made sure it wasn't the trees. It was not inside his home. It was not in his yard. So he walked his property, listening carefully. In one corner, the noise seemed louder. So he followed it until he got to a large home. Dave knocked upon the door and was surprised when it was opened by a monk in brown serviceable robes with a cowl on his head and a smile on his face. Hello, Mr. Monk, my name is Dave, and I really would like to know what that sound is. Aha, said the monk. Well, this is our monastery, and that noise is the secret of our order, and I cannot tell you. I bid you good day, sir, and he started to close the door. Dave held out his hand, sir. Why can you not tell me? Ah, because I can only tell a fellow monk. And the monk closed the door, and Dave went on his way. Years later, Dave had enough of this noise. And he walked back to the door and knocked upon it. And when it was opened by the same monk, Dave threw up his hands and said, All right, I surrender. I am here to become a monk. Teach me your ways so I can finally learn the secret of the noise. I wish to learn about this sound before I go insane. The monk smiled and says, Welcome to our order. Step in. Many years later, after reading the Bible and praying for hours and chanting with his fellow monks, Dave finally became a brother. And Brother Dave stood before the friar one day and said, Friar, I wish to learn the secret of the noise. Ah, yes, said the friar, the sound. Come with me, young man. You shall start your journey. Dave followed the monk, rather perplexed. Okay. The friar opened the door and led into a chamber, and inside this room was a large and burly monk. The friar looked at the monk and said, This man, our brother, is ready today to start his journey. Lead him on the way. Show him how what the sound is. Show him the secret of our order. After a long breath and a deep sigh, The big burly monk said, yes, I shall take him on the journey. And turning to Brother Dave, said, Dave, brother, come with me. And he opened another door that led to a path that led to a large and seemingly endless forest. Dave kind of hesitated here, I will admit, but he stepped forward. Yes, he did, and he went down the path and entered the forest with the big burly monk by his side, and after days uncounted of traveling through the forest and swimming across rivers and walking around lakes and crossing boulder-filled ravines, they finally make it to the shore of an ocean, a great wide ocean of powerful currents 
and fierce winds. What now, says Dave? Now, says the big burly monk, now we build a raft, and we stock it with provisions, and across the water we go. Okay, said Dave, let us begin. And they built a raft, and stocked it with provisions, and set sail upon the ocean, and it sank. Dave and the monk swam back to shore, built a bigger raft, stocked with more supplies, and got back on the ocean. This time as they raised sails, the craft was sound and the way they traveled, at the mercy of the wind and the waves and the tides. Epic tales can be told of their journeys, songs could be written, Words could be spoken for hours and days of the hardships they suffered. They froze, they roasted, they feasted, they famined. But eventually they landed upon a foreign and alien shore. And then they looked across a desert. What now, says Dave? Now, says the shadow of the once burly monk. Now we cross the desert. So they take the time to dry some fish and gather some selfish and make some repairs and supplies that they can. And away they travel, across the ocean, across the desert, following the sun. Days pass, months pass, maybe years. Finally, they cross the desert and come to a jungle. Dave is happy for the relief. Finally, food to eat, fresh fruit, fresh fruit, oh, fresh fruit. Maybe water, running streams, oh, the thought, of cool running streams. After the parching desert and nothing but muddy water, and deep and warm wells, finally a running stream. So they set forth across the, across the jungle, beating at the clutching thorns, pushing through the vines that hung down. The brightest noonday sun barely brought light to the depths of the jungle. Deep under the canopy they walked. Strange birds screamed at them. Monkeys jabbered and threw fruit at them. And odd beasts prowled around their camps. They walked all day and slept little at night. Huddled around the fire. Not to keep warm, but for the hope of keeping safe as bushes rattled and branches snapped around them in the night. Eventually they make it through the desert, to the base of a great and tall mountain. Now, said the monk, who is worn and traveled, now, he says to Dave, now we climb this mountain. I knew that, said Dave. I could feel that, he said. And they start to climb this tall mountain that reaches into the heavens. Up they go. Past the clouds, past the birds, to the rarefied air, into the snow. They find a cave, and they walk inside. The cave leads down down into the depths, the roots, the very base, the heart of the mountain itself. Here they find a chamber, and inside this chamber is a large chest with a lock upon the chest. Oh, says the larger monk. 
own my. Own, says Dave. What is it, my brother? What is wrong? The big burly monk looked at Dave and said, I am sorry, brother Dave. I forgot the key. It's in my desk drawer. We have to go back. Back down the mountain. Back across the jungle. Through the desert. Over the ocean. And through the forest once more. Into my top right hand desk drawer. For the large and silver key that sits within it. And they did. Up the cave. Down the mountain. Through the jungle, through the burning sands of the desert, day by day, through the wasteland, watering hole to watering hole, mere slips and trickles of water coming from the rocks, till finally they made the ocean. Their raft had long since rotted away, lost to the sands of time. So they built a boat, a serviceable ship to sail them across. And upon this they go, they piled their supplies and away they went. They made it back to the beach and back to the forest, which they crossed. Now seasoned, hardy, salted explorers. They made their journey back to the monastery. The weathered, nut-brown monk, who was once burly and strong, now made of whipcord and iron, opens a desk drawer and pulls out his key, looks at Dave, shrugs his shoulders, and out the door he goes. Many tales, many adventures, many harrowing escapes later, they make it through the forest, board their ship, be calmed in the ocean for months, barely food and water to make it through. Back to that distant and alien shore they go. Across that endless, wasteless desert, once more. To the foot, to the start of the jungle. They cross it again this time almost familiar with the monkeys and the birds, not building a fire, no longer caring about the beasts that prowl or the bugs that bite, for they had no longer had interest in them. Their skins were too tough, they had no fat upon their bones, nothing to chew for the big animals, and no way to get in for the bugs. Eventually they make it back to the mountain, climb it this time with ease they make it to the cave and wander down back down deep to that cavern they go click goes the lock are you ready are you ready says the tough as cord the leather hided old tall monk Yes, rasps out, rasps out Dave, who had walked away from everything in the past. His home, his life, his job, had suffered untold hardships, had been broken and beaten and bloodied and bruised, bitten and stung and sprayed and splattered and mattered and all things that cannot be mentioned. And he thought of his journey, and he thought of the time. He said, yes, I am ready to learn the secret. What is this all-pervasive sound that I hear that is now in my very bones? And the older monk lifted the lid, and Dave looks inside, and he starts to laugh. Oh, does he laugh, long and hard and laugh ringing off the stones themselves until it feels like the very mountain is laughing with them. Peel after peel, ranging out across the 
the small spaces, echoing endlessly in the chambers. Are you ready to go? said the monk. Shall we return home? Yes, said Dave. Let us go. And the two men left the chamber to begin the journey home. Now, my anxious visit, my anxious listeners, would you like to know the secret? Would you like to know what this all pervasive sound is? What a man would dedicate his entire life, the very fabric of his being, to? Would you like to know? Well, I cannot tell you. Because you, my dear listener, are most definitely not a monk.